Have you heard about the latest research from scientists who concluded that our universe is a fully-fledged living organism? That stars, planets, and everything on them, including us, are all part of one big body. Crazy, right? But then why is our brain structured in the same way as the universe? And at the end, I will tell you how the stars communicate with each other, and you will definitely be surprised. And I wasn't joking when I spoke about human brains as an example of the structure of the universe. If you take a close look at the cosmic web, which is made up of huge threads of galaxies separated by massive voids, and compare it to the network of neurons in the human brain, you can notice a remarkable similarity between these two structures. How valid is this comparison? The brain, weighing about 1.3 kilograms, contains roughly 100 billion neurons. The number of neural connections in the brain exceeds the number of galaxies in our universe. This similarity became more apparent when astrophysicist Franco Baza and neurobiologist Alberto Folletti quantitatively compared these two structures. Their research has revealed striking similarities, which provokes a lot of speculation, including even the suggestion that our reality may be nothing more than a simulation. Or what do you say about the pupils of the eyes and photographs of the universe from telescopes? Next I will tell you about a bunch of coincidences that are hard to deny even for scientists. But let's take it step by step, since I started with the head. The human brain is indeed one of the most complex objects in the universe. It controls every action, thought, emotion, and word you have, shaping your individuality and managing your daily activities. The brain of an adult human contains about a hundred billion neurons, as I mentioned earlier. Each neuron is connected to about a thousand others, which adds up to a total of 100 trillion connections. Imagine if you tried to count every cell in the brain, it would take you over 3,000 years. Each part of the brain has its own unique function. From thinking to storing memories, from moving your arms and legs to perceiving smells and sounds. All these actions and feelings are created thanks to a complex network of neural connections, which includes hierarchically organized nodes and clusters. Interestingly, neurons make up less than 25% of the brain's mass, while the remaining 75 to 90% is water. Coincidence or not, but just like the brain, the observable universe contains about 100 billion galaxies. The dynamics between gravitational attraction and accelerated expansion create a cosmic web of ordinary and dark matter, resembling the structure of the brain. Interestingly, galaxies cluster at the intersections of galactic filaments, leaving empty spaces between them. Just like the brain, where most of it is invisible due to water, in the universe, only about 25% of the matter is visible, while 75% is taken up by mysterious dark matter. Coincidence. What do you think? So what do the scientists say? In a recently published study in the scientific journal Frontiers in Physics, astrophysicist Franco Baza and neurobiologist Alberto Fietti discussed the amazing similarities between the structures of the universe and the human brain. They noted that, despite the fundamental differences in the physical interactions of these systems, the images obtained from microscopes and space telescopes are strikingly similar. Researchers carefully analyzed images of the cosmic web and neural connections using a method known as power spectrum analysis. This method, traditionally used in astrophysics and cosmology to study the distribution of galaxies, helped them measure small-scale fluctuations in the modeling of galaxies and brain structures, including the cerebellum and the cerebral cortex. Franco Baza and Alberto Fietti created a comparative model, studying the fluctuations of matter and the structural, morphological, and network characteristics in both systems. They found that, on average, the number of connections at each node and the tendency for clustering are expressed in both cases. It's quite remarkable that the distribution of fluctuations in the neural network of the cerebellum, measured on scales from 1 micrometer to 0.1 millimeters, follows the same progression as the distribution of matter in the cosmic web, but on a much larger scale, from 5 to 500 million light years. These results not only confirm the astonishing similarity in the structure of the brain and the universe, but they also provide new opportunities for understanding how they function. And now there's even a research center that's focused on this issue. But if scientists are finding parallels between such complex structures as the brain and the universe, then why not make a similar comparison with other similar objects? Indeed, as part of their research, the scientists also analyzed the power spectra of various complex systems, including images of tree branches, clouds, and water flows. Power spectra alone do not capture the full complexity of the system. So it's important to emphasize that the similarity between the cosmic web and the neural network only becomes apparent when comparing specific scales of each system. In their study, the scientists found that the average number of connections per node and the ways they cluster in both systems reveal striking parallels. Once again, the structural parameters reveal unexpected levels of alignment. 
It's likely that the connections within these two systems develop according to similar physical principles, despite the striking and obvious differences between the physical forces that govern galaxies and neurons. Francesco Fieri points out in his interview with The Independent. Scary, right. What if we applied Darwin's theory to stars and planets? The topic of evolution in the universe, proposed by physicists, expands the traditional understanding of this process, going beyond just living nature. According to the new hypothesis, evolution is characteristic of all existence, from stars and atomic structures to the crystalline lattices of metals and stones. How does this work? According to this theory, natural selection can weed out stars that are poorly formed by nature, just like it happens in the biological world. This idea raises questions about traditional views dating back to the 19th century, which suggest that the universe strives for simplicity, for a state of minimal energy, and that in the process of life, everything just breaks down. The third law of thermodynamics is insufficient to explain the universe's development. Observations show increasing complexity from hydrogen to new elements in life. Physicists liken this to Darwinian selection. For example, observations of the universe show that it is becoming increasingly complex, starting from a primordial state consisting mainly of hydrogen, through the formation of new chemical elements as a result of nuclear reactions in stars, to the emergence of life on Earth and perhaps elsewhere. Physicists see complexity as Darwinian selection. Massive stars are extinct. For example, huge stars that can be compared to dinosaurs in size no longer exist today and can be considered extinct, which also fits into the concept of evolutionary change. And when we raise the question of whether we can call the universe an organism, we encounter a philosophical dilemma. Is all existence alive, and does the universe possess intelligence? This idea opens up new horizons for thinking about the nature of everything that exists and its interconnections. Is all existence alive, and does the universe possess intelligence? This idea opens up new horizons for thinking about the nature of everything that exists and its interconnections. What do you think about the idea that, on the scale of the universe, we are just nothing? What seems huge to us is actually considered just as small as atoms are to us. This hypothesis presents a view of the cosmos as a living, organic complex, where the scales of different forms of life stretch from the micro world to the macro world. And yes, this isn't just the opinion of modern scientists. The hypothesis is reminiscent of the ancient idea of the universe, where each element is connected to another, and each level of reality reflects other levels. This idea is reflected in many cultures and religious teachings. The application of Hermes' principle of similarity to man, considered as part of a larger cosmic organism, introduces the fascinating idea that we may be analogous structural elements in the body of some macroman. Just as atoms and molecules form our bodies, stars and galaxies can form organisms on a cosmic scale that are hard for us to imagine in size. If we assume that our universe is just one organism among many others in some hypothetical macrocosm, it implies the existence of other macro-universes where forms of life could also develop, possibly completely different from our own. This view expands our understanding of the diversity of life in the universe, suggesting that life can exist at different levels of organization and scales. So how do we look on our planet? If we consider the Earth as an electron in an oxygen atom, which in turn is part of a larger cosmic organism, then we can assume that at each level of scale there are its own, unique forms of life. This raises interesting questions about the nature of consciousness and life, and how scale affects our understanding of reality. It's even hard for me to imagine what kind of organism we might be a part of if Earth is just a part of a molecule within it. A theory that just breaks all the molds. But this often happens when the greatest discoveries in science force us to rethink our views on the workings of the world. So, the metaphor of the macrohuman, where the universe is presented as a living organism, finds amazing parallels in modern astrophysics and the development of a human embryo. Imagine a human embryo growing 50 times in just 30 days. It's reminiscent of an astronomical event known as the Big Bang. However, unlike the chaotic and unpredictable Big Bang, the development of the embryo follows a clear, predetermined plan, without any black holes or singularities where matter reaches infinite density. In living organisms, everything is built and developed according to understandable and measurable laws of nature. However, unlike the chaotic and unpredictable Big Bang, the development of the embryo follows a clear, predetermined plan, without any black holes or singularities where matter reaches infinite density. In living organisms, everything is built and developed according to understandable and measurable laws of nature. It's exactly these observations that lead us to an interesting conclusion. Perhaps our universe is also developing according to some internal, predetermined script, more akin to the growth of an organism than to random chaos. This idea, which traces back to Hermes Trismegistus, an ancient scholar who viewed the world as a single living whole and was one of the first to try to study the universe, is something I'll talk more about regarding his theory. Even Stephen Hawking, the great mind of the last century, began to doubt his theories about black holes towards the end of his life which might indicate a crisis in modern cosmology based on the Big Bang Theory. 
These doubts from the scientist raise questions about the accuracy of our understanding of the cosmos. Moreover, Hubble's law, which states that the farther a star is from us, the faster it is moving away, also finds its analogs in biology. So, in a growing organism, each cell also moves away from the center of growth, which is similar to the expansion of the universe. Another coincidence. But let me tell you about the thoughts of the ancients, as I promised. In the world of scientific discoveries, sometimes theories arise that seem more like myth or fiction. However, the ideas of Hermes Trismegistus about the structure of the world, comparing the universe with a living organism, are confirmed in modern astronomical research. I think you will not argue with this. Astronomers discovered galaxy superclusters form structures like a cellular structure. The Spitzer Space Telescope found a star system resembling DNA. These large-scale cells of the universe are huge voids surrounded by galaxies, which can be compared to a cell membrane that limits and protects a living cell. Another amazing discovery was made thanks to the Spitzer Space Telescope, which recorded a star system that is surprisingly reminiscent of the DNA molecule in its structure. This system, stretching over 80 light years, consists of two intertwined chains of stars, which is a striking example of cosmic order similar to biological structures. Universe size aligns with Hermes. 20 billion light years match modern views. Beyond 20 billion light years, complex cosmos as Hermes proposed. For example, the estimates he proposed of 20 billion light years are quite close to modern scientific assumptions. An interesting phenomenon is the violation of Hubble's law at distances greater than 20 billion light years, which suggests the possible existence of areas beyond the observable universe. This could also indicate a complex, multi-layered structure of the cosmos, as proposed by Hermes. In addition, data from the ViewMap space probe revealed unusual regions of elevated and reduced radiation levels, reminiscent of the anatomy of the human body, which is elongated along its axis and compressed laterally. This data might suggest that the universe isn't a perfect sphere, as was previously thought, but has a more complex and asymmetrical shape. So now think about it, is it a myth or some ancient knowledge? But some modern scientists have decided to take it even further. The ideas of Rupert Sheldrake and Greg Matloff that stars might possess consciousness really sound like a step back to childhood notions of the universe. But they can also open up new directions in scientific research. What's so special about their theory? Sheldrake suggests that the sun and other stars might regulate their behavior and even communicate with each other through flares and coronal mass ejections. These ideas spark a lot of debate and skepticism because they offer a completely different picture of the cosmos where stars behave like living beings. Matt Matloff, known for his work at NASA, proposed abandoning the dark matter theory and considering the possibility that stars might have their own will. This proposal fundamentally changes the traditional view of astrophysics and calls for a new approach to studying the universe. How does it work? Every pulse or flare on the sun is like an impulse in our nervous system when we're trying to do something or when the body is sending out some information. And this fits perfectly with all the coincidences I described to you earlier. After all, many phenomena and outbursts happening in the universe are still not understood. Such theories not only spark scientific debates, but also draw attention to fundamental questions about the nature of consciousness and life in the universe. Even though the ideas about conscious stars seem extravagant to us, they could stimulate further research that might lead to new discoveries in cosmology and physics. What do you think? Does such a crazy theory have a right to exist? Write your opinion in the comments, I will read it with pleasure, because everything sounds very harmonious and logical. And if you like interesting stories, you know how to write scripts, edit, or voice videos, then go to the Telegram bot using the link in the description. I will be glad to cooperate with you. And thanks for watching. Friends, 